Electric Friends, a Gary Newman podcast celebrating the tracks by a musical pioneer. To say Gary Newman had a prolific 1979 is an understatement and a half. Aged just 21, he and his band Tubey Army became overnight sensations when our friends Electric wowed audiences on the old grey whistle test. See episode one to hear more about that. Tubey Army only released two singles from their second album, the number one LP Replicas, but they didn't release any more from it following the success of Our Friends Electric. I always felt like they could have capitalised on it and perhaps re-released Down in the Park or brought out Me I Disconnect from You. But no, Gary was brimming with ideas and he was already back in the studio armed with something even more incredible. What came next was the seminal album The Pleasure Principle. We'll delve into the album as a whole on a later episode, but for now, let's focus on the album's lead single. The song, which was released just a couple of months after Our Friends Electric in the summer of 1979 and cemented Gary Newman as a synth-pop god. It's, of course, perhaps his biggest and best-known song, Cars. If you listen to the intro episode trailer for the podcast, you'll know my history of Cars. I was aged seven or eight when I first heard it. It was on a rock and roll year style program going through the years. And when it got to 1979, there was just a few seconds, maybe 30 or so, of a clip of a man named Gary Newman singing a song called Cars. It was just the first verse and a bit, but it got me instantly mesmerised. I loved every second of it from his robotic stare, his alien-like vocals, the sound of the synths. I'd not heard anything like it before. Four. Even his name looked cool written down. I was hooked from then on, and I assume this is what a lot of you listening now felt as well. I only saw this in 1994, so I can't imagine what it must have been like for youths back in 1979. If you hadn't listened to the likes of Kraftwerk or the Human League at that point, it must have been like Aliens had landed on Earth and brought with it this new intense style of music to usher in the 80s. When I eventually tracked down the full song, it was the early days of the internet, it took quite a while, uh, it was even better than I imagined. Uh, To this day, if I'm perfectly honest with myself, it's my favourite song of all time. I think Glenn Campbell's Wichita Lyman is the only one that rivals it. And technically speaking, Gary himself would probably say it's not one of his best songs. There's not much that actually happens in it, but that's what makes it so special. The song begins with what I can only describe as an electric synth wobble that instantly draws you in and makes you think, whoa, what's this? After the drums kick in, in comes the high synths, played on the mini moog and poly moog. What I love about this riff is that while the da da na na bits are going on, is that high A note that lingers in uh, an almost an aggressive manner. It demands your attention. Gary's vocals then come in double tracks as he sings about how he feels safe when locked inside his car. It's simple, to the point, and the in cars line is instantly memorable. We then get the instrumental breakdown with the tambourine percussion acting almost as a feeling of a car in motion. The second verse then comes in as he perhaps ponders letting someone else join him in his safety zone, but is that a good idea after all? Here in my car, where the down, will you visit me please? 
is a conventional rock rhythm section of bass guitar and drums, though the rest of the instruments used in the song are analogue synthesizers, mainly the mini moog on the song's recognisable bass riff, and the poly moog keyboard providing the synthetic string lines over the bass riff. There is no chorus as such, um, and from here the song actually becomes an instrumental from the 1 minute 30 point until its end. As it continues, the moog synths start to harmonise in a rather beautiful way. laugh when I recently saw the tribute act Tubeway Days performing as the brilliant Chris Fielding had a running joke that he had got bored by the end of cars saying I didn't have anything to do there for a while. For this reason it's probably quite an awkward song to perform live for Gary and it makes sense that he gets behind the keyboard for this one. Uh, the song was recorded at the Marcus Music AB studio in London. It features obviously Gary on vocals and production keyboards and synths, alongside Paul Gardner on bass, Chris Payne on keyboards and Cedric Sharpley on drums and tambourine. Speaking in the book Revolution, Gary wrote, Cars came about because I wanted to learn how to play bass better. I went to London and bought a bass guitar, a sheer gold modulator. Back at my parents' house, and in the same room as the first ever Tubby Army rehearsal, where I'd not long ago written down in the park and our friends electric, I took the bass out and played it for the first time. The very first four notes were the four notes of the main Cars bass riff. I like that, so I played four different notes as an answer line. And Cars is pretty much done, in less than a minute. Those eight notes are the song, exactly as I played them straight out of the case. A few minutes later, I had the third section of the song done, and about 30 minutes later, I had the lyrics. I have never written the song more quickly than that. Without doubt, that was the most productive few minutes of my entire life. It was the first release credited to just Gary Newman after he dropped the Tubeway Army band name, despite keeping the same members with him. Speaking to Record Collector, Gary said that this was the first time I had written a song with the intention of maybe it could be a hit single. I was writing this before our friend's electric happened. He has since described Cars as a pretty average song and he wouldn't play it live for a few years. He told the Arts Desk in 2012, for about three years I wouldn't play Cars live and then I thought, that's arrogant, that's ignorant. So I got over that and started playing it again, but didn't really enjoy it. Recently, in the last five years or so, I've come to appreciate, not the song particularly, it's a pretty average song, but what it's done. It's one of the most famous songs ever. That's quite a cool thing to have done, so I have a much more favourable relationship with it than before. I feel really proud that I wrote something that successful, and I've gone full circle with it. I also always had a problem performing Cars because it's three or four minutes long and all the singing happens in the first minute. After that, what do I do? Stand around looking interested? I used to sit on the side of the stage and watch the band, but doing it on TV is a nightmare. You just have to stand there. Lyrically, there's a few theories about what it all means. Uh, one comment I found on songmeanings.com stated, uh, the song is about isolation. It really has nothing to do with cars at all. He just uses them as a metaphor. He talks about locking himself away and how it makes him feel safe. It gives him time to himself and time to think, but at the same time, his constant isolation makes him miserable. When all your world becomes too much, sometimes you need to leave it and isolate yourself. That way you can get yourself together, contemplate all that is making you feel the need to be alone. You don't have to give yourself out to all that stresses you and you're able to once again collect yourself and stabilise once more. But at the same time, you bottle things up and you become dependent on your isolation. Slowly it kills you and truly what you need is someone to be there with you. That's what he means when he says, will you visit me please if I open my door? Eventually after all of your isolation, you start to think too much and your thoughts turn in the direction where they really have no business being. Gary himself has said that the song was mainly about a road rage incident. He told Mojo, A couple of blokes started peering in the window and for whatever reason took a dislike to me, so I had to take evasive action. I swerved up on the pavement, scattering pedestrians everywhere. After that, I began to see the car as the tank of modern society. Elaborating in Revolution, Gary said, Cars was about an incident I'd had while driving a few years before. 
I'd unintentionally angered two men in the car in front, and when we stopped in traffic, they got out intent on doing me harm. Shouting, kicking the car, trying to open the doors, which luckily I always kept locked. They tried everything to get to me. I was genuinely terrified. I saw a gap appear in the lane beside me, so I drove into that and then, panicking and desperate to get away, up onto the pavement. I drove along the pavement, pedestrians leaping out of the way, off into the next street and escaped. I felt then, and have done ever since, that a car is like a tank for civilians. It keeps us safe, separated from the outside world. In our metal shell, we are able to travel wherever we need to go, safe and protected. Cars is about that feeling, and is one of only two songs I've ever written on a bass guitar. The irony that Cars, now considered one of the all-time classic electronic songs, was written on a bass guitar is not lost on me. And talking about the writing process in his first autobiography, Praying to the Aliens, Gary said, I think Cars is probably the best pop song I've ever written. In many ways, it's quite possibly the only pure pop song I've ever written. It has very simple lyrics, but people still got it wrong. One man in America wrote a really long review, examining every line and coming to the conclusion that it was all about me coming out of the closet and admitting that I was gay. No, not at all. It's about me feeling safer in a car and walking down the high street. It's about the way I think of a modern motor car as a personal tank. I can always drive away at the first sign of trouble. I was very pleased with the promo video, my first, because I thought it went perfectly with the image, the style of music and the song. Cars indeed had an early form of the music video, which helped its success in the MTV era. Uh, the music video featured Newman's then current backing band, including Billy Curry from Ultravox, though he had not actually played on the recording. While not actually showing a car in the video, it does show Gary driving, albeit in a standing position, holding an imaginary steering wheel, alongside a polymoo keyboard. Uh, Gary looks so strangely cool in the video, the piercing stare as he walks in slow motion during the intro, and then the red boiler suit he wears during the verses. So effective. The original UK single was released in August 1979, backed with the non-album instrumental track Asylum, which is ridiculously haunting. USB side was Metal, which we will, of course, delve into in a future episode soon. In the UK charts, it reached number one in 1979, giving him his second chart topper of the year. In 1980, it hit number one in Canada for two weeks on the RPM National Singles Chart, and it was his only single to chart there. It rose to number four on the US Cashbox Top 100 and number nine on the US Billboard Hot 100. Though Newman had a string of hits in the UK, Cars was his only song in the American pop charts, and because of this, he is incorrectly thought of as a one-hit wonder in the States. Speaking to Song Facts in 2010, he was asked if he was bothered by this tag, and he said, In a way, it does, but you have to be realistic. It's better to have had one than none. On the other hand, it gives you that drive to keep on going, I suppose, because I do it because I love it. I think if having hit singles and that level of success is your reason for making music in the first place, then I would find that situation very frustrating if I only had one hit. But the truth is, I do it almost as a hobby. I've just been lucky that I've been able to earn a living from it for such a long time. Because if I didn't earn a living from it, I would still make exactly the same records and write exactly the same songs. If an album comes out and it doesn't sell in large numbers, or in America it doesn't sell at all, I'm not devastated by that. I'm not sitting back thinking it's all a waste of time because I just enjoyed making it in the first place. And luckily for me, there's been other countries, the UK obviously, where things have gone differently and much better. And it's enabled me to keep on doing it, to keep on earning a living from it. So there is a mix of frustration because it's an amazing country to be successful in. On the other hand, I don't feel as if my life has been diminished by not having an ongoing success there. The lifespan of Cars has kept on going through the decades with various remixes, covers, live versions and references on TV and film, and so here's just a handful of the ones I can remember. In 1987, Beggar's Banquet released a new best of compilation called Exhibition, and to promote the album they commissioned a brand new remix of Cars called the E-Reg Model from German producer Zeus B. Held. Uh, by this point, it had been a while since Gary had a significant chart hit, and this new remix brought him back into the top 20, peaking at number 16. 
I almost prefer this version to the original, weirdly. I, it featured a new intro and brought it up to date in the style of the mid to late 80s electro pop from the likes of Erasure or Pet Shop Boys, yet it doesn't sound dated to this day. It also helped Gary out by introducing a vocal outro loop of Gary singing, Here in my car, nothing seems, giving him something to do as the song finishes. In 1993, it was remixed again, this time by Native Soul as the 93 Sprint for the latest Best of Gary Newman compilation. A side note, this compilation was the very first Gary album I had on cassette. I remember my brother Gideon giving it to me as a present on Christmas 94, an amazing moment that started my obsession. Anyway, the remix itself is very much of its time, full of high energy dance beats, uh, hasn't quite stood the test of time, and it was also not a hit, not reaching a UK top 40 at the time. Just three years later, it was released again, this time called the Premier Mix. It was actually just the E-Reg model with a different name. The reason for this release was its use in a rather awesome and successful Carling Beer advert. It saw Gary back on top of the pops and back in the charts with his first hit in a decade, peaking at number 17 this time. My 10-year-old self was ridiculously excited at the time, as this was the first time I'd experienced him on TV and in the charts in real time, as it were, rather than just clip shows. world that's losing its head, a lager that doesn't. In 2003, it was reworked completely for the Hybrid Remix album. This time it was by producer Flood, and it's absolutely brilliant. Not so much a remix, but more of a reboot, using new vocals from Gary. It has turned into a haunting horror song that's perfect for a Halloween soundtrack of some kind. Honestly, it's actually one of my favourite songs by Gary, and deserves more love. In 1999, the US metal band Fear Factory released a cover version with Gary on backing vocals, and I think this version deserves its own episode at some point, so I won't go into too much detail now, but Gary's involvement in the song both helped the band's record sales, and but also helped reintroduce him to a new audience, and also kept him going in this new industrial metal focus. And in a way, we owe a lot of Gary's renewed success to this single. It picked at number 16 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Chart and number 38 on Modern Rock Tracks in America and at number 57 in the UK. I can only receive, I can 
Baron Knights who used the melody and background to uh, Cars in We Know Who Done It, their 1980 parody and spoof of Who Shot JR. Poor old JR, lying there on the floor. He was such a nice bloke, but somebody shot JR. Cool G Rap and DJ Polo released their own hip-hop version of Cars on their debut Road to the Riches album in 1989. <laughs> And Cars was also covered by the Judy Bats on the 91 single Daylight and by Shampoo on the Girl Power single in 1995. I remember buying this one at the time in 2000. Coochie by Armin van Helden uh, relied heavily on the car's melody and it was a UK top five hit at the time. When I call your house after work, I want that Gucci and I'll make it squirt. In 2009, Chicane sampled cars in Hiding All the Stars, which reached number 42 in the UK. And this is one of my favourites. Bill Bailey also released a brilliant cover version in French using car horns, no less. Ici dans ma voiture, je suis en sécurité. Je peux fermer les portes aux clés. C'est pas mauvais dans la voiture. Ici dans ma voiture, je peux rester voir. Je peux vous écouter. Ça m'a rend décontracté dans la voiture. And Nine Inch Nails performed Cars several times during their Wave Goodbye tour in 2009, featuring Newman himself on vocals when they appeared in the UK. Here's a quick roundup of its references in shows including The Simpsons, Family Guy, South Park, and Two and a Half Men. My name is Craig Tucker. Last week, I stopped the Giddy Pirates from taking over the Earth. All the Peruvian flute bands were released and drove the Giddy creatures back to the Andes Mountains. Here in my car, I am hoging off blood. Some of it's mine, but most of it's not. Here's Marge. Can we play my mixtape? Yeah, go ahead. Brian had sex with a really dumb girl. Now he's taking his friend Stewie to get some ice cream in his car. Oh, you're a poor sport. Here in my car, I feel safest of all. I can walk on the door. It's the only window in cars. Yeah. 
<laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Building an original 1978 Firebird. Got it on eBay. Okay. It was also a song on Wave 103 on Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and it pops up in films like Wonder Woman 84, Everybody Wants Some, and even The Muppets. Gary also performed Cars, uh, using a set of two dozen automobiles and their horns in a 2010 advert for Die Hard Batteries. All of the cars were powered from one single battery, and it looked pretty darn cool. James Frost of Zoo Films directed the video, and Sin Labs, which had previously worked with the band OK Go, engineered the cars. We powered a cube of lights. A double stack keyboard, 24 cars without batteries, and Gary Newman. All with one die hard platinum battery. Still started. Life demands die hard. Cars is quite simply a milestone in pop music. It ushered in a new era for new wave and electronic synth pop, influenced countless other artists, and made Gary an international pop star. For anyone who thought Our Friends Electric was a weird fluke, Cars proved that was definitely not the case. While Gary himself might have a love-hate relationship with it, it was also his most important song, and the song which made many of his fans, including me, fall in love with his music and follow his career ever since. It shows that you don't need to follow all the usual tropes of what makes a pop song. Similar to my other favourite song, which is our lineman, it doesn't actually have a chorus, it's just a couple of simple verses and a long outro, yet somehow it all fits perfectly together and makes for one hell of a piece of pop music. So looking at our fan reactions, uh, asking some comments on social media, uh, Alan Dalaku said, I was 10 years old when it came on the radio. I never heard of uh, synthesizers, so that music was completely alien to me. It sounded like I was listening to a sci-fi movie. I would just stare at the radio when it was on. Uh, Tony Howard said, it was uh, 79, I was 12 years old. Cars was the very first record that I bought myself, and I still have that single. I'm 54 now. To say it left a mark is an understatement. Uh, on Twitter, Tony J said, The greatest pop song ever written. The first song all new mos learn to play. Not enough credit is given to said sharply for that non-stop drumming. Uh, brilliant tune. Uh, John Garland said, Loved it then, still sounds modern today and quite rightly recognised as a classic. Controversially, perhaps, it's not a favourite of mine. Tend to take the opportunity for a toilet break when it's played live these days. Absolutely sacrilegious, John. How dare you? <laughs> and uh, Dream Killer said, uh, Firstly, it was the confirmation that I needed that an album purchase was needed. Right from the off, I knew the songs and the artists connected with me in a way no others had. I mean, I can even remember where I was when I first heard Cars. It all just felt very special. On Facebook, Dave Travis said, I still like Cars as it's a classic and still a good song to listen to. I've been listening to it quite a bit recently as I've had the pleasure principle playing in the car for a few weeks now. I was 11 when it came out and have loved it since I first heard it. I don't listen to it as much as I did, but I still love it anyway. Uh, Pam Donaldson said, this is funny, uh, I did a terrible thing to Cars. My dad was in a cast up to his groin. He told me to go clean his room and I said after the song is over. He started towards me and I made him chase me around the pool till the song ended. I knew he couldn't catch me. Uh, this is a great comment. Uh, Alison Babylon said, In 1979, my siblings and I are staying up late to watch Saturday Night Live. The host that night was Elliot Gould, and the sketches were typical of that season. A bit hard to watch, sometimes deliberately so. Just at the point where I'm completely fed up for 13 years of age, Elliot Gould announces a name, the crowd yelled, and a synth thrummed. Then, there he was. My first thought was that he was looking at the camera like it had just intruded on a deeply personal conversation and he wanted it to leave. That alone was so relatable to me. He had immediately had my full attention. His voice was odd, but hypnotically sonorous, almost personal in tone. The music dominated by that bass-heavy synth, kind of like a deep, clean roar. 
It didn't look or sound anything like the guitar, wanky, proto-pop metal that everything else on American TV and radio sounded like. No boring solos, no sound alike singers over big, stupid stadium rock beats, no creepy tufts of late 70s chest hair. Most importantly to me, outward gender was, if not outright ambiguous, not remotely as ever as my big brother's Ted Nugent records made me think of all rock and roll guys had to be. Newman was different immediately, subtle, important. I was already sick of pre-80s hair metal and he was gloriously other, which meant there might be more others out there. There was. My local record shop overflowed with amazing things I hadn't even started to imagine existed. By that fall, I was lobbying our parents for a bass guitar. By Christmas, I had one sized just right. I'd gone from completely disinterested in music to almost rabid about it. Mum and Dad were secretly delighted. Gaza kicked open a door for me that I'd only just begun to look for. I'm going to love him forever for that. Great comment. Thank you uh, for that, Alison. And finally, Jacob Clark said, My story behind Cars started back in 2018 when I was sat in a music room and just got myself into keyboards. Uh, my music teacher told me to listen to Our Friends Electric. I didn't know the tune, but he told me to listen to Cars because I might know it, and I did. I was about 11 at the time, and it was totally new to me and changed my perspective of music entirely. I was so excited for the release of Intruder because it was my first album that he had released while I was in his fan base. He released Savage a year earlier, and his more recent albums blow me away. Sadly, that music teacher died of cancer two years later, and that is why Cars is so special to me. Thank you very much for that comment, Jacob. And that is it for this episode. I'll be back next time with another Gary Newman track. If you'd like to get in touch, you can follow me on Twitter at Newman Podcast, or you can email me newmanpodcast at gmail.com. You can listen to all past episodes and subscribe to the show at newmanpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Electric Friends, a Gary Newman podcast celebrating the tracks by a musical pioneer. pioneer.